Later today, an extraordinary court case gets underway in Italy. Six scientists and a public official are facing charges of manslaughter over the earthquake which struck the city of L'Aquila in April 2009, killing 309 people. Prosecutors claim the men should have known the risks and told people to leave the area. The case has sent shockwaves across the world, with 5,000 scientists signing a petition condemning the action. And one of them is Kevin McHugh, the director of the Australian Seismology Centre. I think there's an unreal expectation about um, exactly what seismologists know and what they don't know. And one of the things we don't know is when the next earthquake is going to happen. So I think the case is presumed on the basis that we either knew or didn't know that a, that a large earthquake was coming. It seems that the, the scientists at the heart of this case and the official gave the advice they thought that the um, earthquakes, the smaller earthquakes that had been happening in the days, the months before the big one hit, weren't cause for alarm and that people in Aquila were ready to leave, in fact, and they didn't because of the advice that they got from the scientists. They decided to stay. And that's at the, the root of this case. What are your thoughts on that? Yes, on the, on the probabilities, the probability that a large earthquake was going to follow those small earthquakes was very small. And I think that's, uh, that's what they said. They said it wasn't... Um, it wasn't zero, but uh, the, the probability of a large earthquake happening in the next few days to weeks uh, was not not negligible, but but uh, it was very small. And on that basis, they, I guess, they decided that uh, there was nothing required to be done. If the scientists are convicted in Italy, how could that change the way that you talk about earthquakes? Well, it'll probably be the last time I appear in this um, in this room, Roz. But if you can't predict earthquakes and you can't say with any or a slight degree of certainty if there's going to be a big one around the corner, if there have been smaller quakes uh, leading up, what do you do? What's your well, job? Well, it's a hard, yes, okay. It's uh, our job is to ascertain the risk, and uh, one of our inputs is what is an acceptable level of risk. And, and mostly this is not something that's discussed by the public, but it's certainly discussed by engineers and seismologists. And so we have this level of acceptable risk. And where that level is too low, then we require buildings to be designed to resist an earthquake. So, so depending on the level of risk, you have higher requirements for um, building resilience. And this is what didn't happen in Italy. Nobody bothered to design their buildings uh, to resist earthquakes, and it's exactly the problem we have here in Australia. If you look at the uh, L'Aquila earthquake, it was about magnitude 6.3. We have, on average, about 10 of those every 100 years. In other words, we have one, on average, about every 10 years. But um, in Australia, virtually z no buildings are designed to resist earthquakes. Even though we have an earthquake hazard map of Australia, we've delineated the areas of high risk, just as they did in Italy. But in Australia, there is nobody to ensure, nobody qualified to ensure that those requirements of the building code are met. Kevin McHugh, thank you. Thanks, Ros.